So today in Minecraft, um, what we're going to be doing is checking out um, different ways to not only build something cool, but also to improve your writing skills and be able to write really great step-by-step -step directions. Um, that takes a lot of writing skills sometimes, and just by learning a few different verbs and different connecting words, um, you can really level up your skills really quickly. So we're going to learn something cool to build, and we're going to learn a way to write. The first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to make sure that you have a book in your inventory in creative mode. Let's grab a book. Um, this is Minecraft for Education, so they even have a way to take pictures. Um, I'm going to do the picture version for this. I'm also going to show you the book and quill version. Where is, there's the portfolio. And let's get our camera out too. Alright. Now for what I'm building, um, you're going to need um, a few different supplies. So obviously you're going to need um, whatever you're going to make your building out of. So I'm just going to use normal, normal smooth stone to build out of. And we're also going to need um, a picture frame or a painting. So we'll get some of those. And for this one, um, I'm going to see and I'm going to show you what it looks like using a secret door as well. Let's get a button. And oh man, I got rid of my torch. Let's get a torch. So we have a little bit of light. And that's all uh, we need. Now, the first thing that you want to do in any good instructions is, of course, you want to tell people what they're going to need. Now, when you write um, instructions on how to do something, you use a special kind of verb. And let me show you what those verbs are. So over here, you see these kind of verbs, imperative verbs. And these kinds of verbs are bossy words. They tell someone what to do with um, nothing. They tell someone what to do um, in a way that there's no confusion at all. They know exactly what they're supposed to do. Um, some of the examples are add, fetch, attach, flip, move, push, take, rotate, point, place, plug, get, hold, stick, and turn. And you've probably heard all these words before. You might have heard coaches use them when they're telling you how to do something in a sport that you play. You might have heard your teachers use them when they're telling you something um, new to do. Um, you might have even used them yourself to tell your brothers or sisters how to do something. Um, they're all bossy words or imperative verbs, okay? And so we're going to use a lot of these as we make our instructions. Um, over here you see time connective. So these are just words um, that tell you when to do something. They have to do with time. So there, a lot of these um, we use as transitional words. So firstly, next, after that. I'm sure you've heard your teachers um, talk a lot about this in writing um, as we build paragraphs. Um, so as we're writing these instructions, you're gonna wanna use different time connector words and transitions to tell people when they should do something. You don't want somebody building a wall before they built the ceiling or whatever else they need to build. So some of these ones are firstly, next, after that, finally, to begin, then, eventually, first of all, at this point, initially, after a while, meanwhile, before, while, and earlier. So these are the special words um, or special types of words that we're going to be using today. 
So here we are back in and I'm going to show you how to build a whole way in your Minecraft builds to hide secret rooms, which is one of my favorite things to do. So let's get started and I'm going to use my book and quill first. So the first thing I'm going to do is I think people should know what different materials they need. So I'm going to say first one of those time words, so time transitions. First, get, there's one of our bossy verbs. First get, hmm, I think they're gonna need two torches. Uh, hmm, a stack of your favorite building blocks, because people might have different ones they like. Stack of your favorite building blocks. What else are they going to need? Oh, they're going to need, uh, let me say four paintings. What else do they need? Two torches, a stack of your favorite building blocks, four paintings. Oh, an iron door. Um, a button. Is there anything else we needed? Let me go check in our inventory. Hmm, torch time looks like it. Let's open back up our book and put in and right here and a button. There we go. All right, so there's step one. Do, do, do. Okay. Now still show you how to. I'm just gonna build a, a simple kind of certain room. No matter how it is, because it's just gonna be whatever you for your secret room. So I'm just gonna build all of it so you can see how to do it. Hopefully there will be something cool back here that you're hiding from your enemies and the sisters if they're playing with. All right, so there, our favorite room. All right, now next, go ahead and write what that step was. So, what's a good time thing word we should use for this transition? Hmm. So we used first right here. So maybe let next let's use secondly. Secondly, build a secret room in your area using your favorite building blocks. There we go. Now let's go ahead and finish this room real quick. There we go. Fast, fast. Build our secret room. Normally I play on an Xbox, and today I'm playing on a computer, and it is a lot more difficult to maneuver. At least for me. If you're used to playing on a tablet, that's probably how this feels. There we go. So there we have a simple, basic secret room. All right, now the next thing, of course, is you're gonna wanna make sure your secret room is lit inside because you know what happens if you don't, you get monsters spawning. So let's go ahead and tell them that in the instructions. So let's review our instructions again. First, get two torches, a stack of your favorite building blocks, four paintings, an iron door, and a button. Secondly, build a secret room in your area using your favorite building blocks. Okay, we did that. Let's use our next time transition. I'm gonna use next. Oh, there we go. Next, let's take a look at our bossy words again and see if there's anything important that we could use there. Maybe there's a cool Hmm, what would be good word to use to tell people to put their torches inside the room? 
add their torches to the room, fetch their torches to the room, attach their torches to the room, flip the torch, move the torch, push the torch, take the torch. Well, move almost sounds right, but we're not really moving it. We're more like, uh, how about placing it? We're placing the torch there. We're not turning it, we're not sticking it, we're not holding it. We're placing it on another block. So that seems like the best word to me. So I'm gonna use that one for this. All right, so next place, next place the torch. I guess, or torches, you could use more than one. You might build a large secret room. Place a torch or torches inside your secret room. And maybe we should give some more detail about why they're supposed to do that. Because it's good for the people who are knowing, um, learning this new way to build, but they know exactly why they're doing everything. This will keep monsters from spawning inside. All right, next we're going to do my, so first, let's go ahead and place our door. Let's place our door down. Put a button right there. Oh no, I keep getting, oh no, trapped in here forever. All right, there we go, there's our door. And now, this is my favorite part. Sometimes this takes a little, like a few tries, um, just because the paint in certain places will be only different sizes. So you can see if I push it down here, it makes one that's too high. If I put it up here, it only goes one. Make one right here, see it goes sideways, but it'll do random different ones. So you can try a bunch of different ones until you find you one you like. But the most important part is you want to put it so that it covers your door okay and you you can fill in the whole thing so when people see it they're like oh look they just put a, put a whole lot of paintings there that's strange all right so this next step is a little more complicated so we're gonna have to make sure we explain it really well so people know what we're talking about so let's get into our book and let's review our steps so we said first get two torches to stack your favorite building blocks four paintings an iron door and a button Secondly, build a secret room in your area using your favorite building blocks. All right. Next, place a torch or torches inside your secret room. This will keep monsters from spawning us inside. All right. Now, next, let's think about what we did first. The first thing we did is not place the painting. The first thing we did was place the door. So let's think, what are, can we tell them to do next? What kind of time word can we use? Let's go ahead and check out the time words and see which one would fit well so we've so far we've used first secondly and next you don't want to keep using the same word over and over because well first of all it wouldn't make sense and second of all it's pretty boring if i kept using next 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 you get bored really quickly um you don't hear any youtubers using the word next 500 times also if we said first second and then first again people would get confused because you said the first step was this if you used first again, people would think that maybe they were supposed to do that as well. They'd just be confused about when they were supposed to do that step. So let's check out our, our um, time words and see if there's anything new we can use. So let's see, we used first and we used next and we used secondly. Um, we could say then, there's also after that um, we couldn't use finally because finally it's final. It's like the last part and we're not quite at the last step before and we're not saying before anything or while or earlier. So I think let's go with then or after that sounds pretty good. All right, so let's use then. Then place the, oh, there we go the iron door in the door space in your secret room. Now we also want to tell them um, to place a button inside. So also 
place a button next to the door inside. And let's explain why. So you can get out without destroying your walls. We don't want them to have to ruin something they've built to just get out, because you know iron doors only work with buttons. All right, so then place the iron door in the door space in your secret room. Also place the button next to the door inside so you can get out without destroying your walls. Perfect. Now we already know the next step about the painting, so let's go ahead and do that one too. So we use then, let's try after that now, one of our other time connecting words. After that, use a painting to cover the entire space where the door is. And we also want to tell them and remind them that this might take a little bit of practice. It might take them clicking in different spaces. So let's go ahead and tell them that. This might take a little while and you may want to place your paintings in different places until you get it just the way you like. Period. All right. Now, so here we are, we see the cake. Now this looks like it is part of the wall. But what's weird about painting, do you find them? Yeah, that's the cool thing. We can, we can actually destroy this now. And now we see we have our iron door and we can do a couple different things. So if you wanna keep an iron door, you want like the ultimate protection because iron doors have the most strength. Um, you can put in a button somewhere farther away um, to press when you want to open the door. Um, this requires you to put redstone in, so we want something simple. So a simpler way to do this is to either use not an iron door or use a pressure plate. So I'm going to show you both ways and then we'll pick which one we want to write for the instructions. So let's go ahead and get a pressure plate. There we go. And let's get a stone one so it'll kind of blend in with everything. We want this to be secret after all. Get out of here. Red torches. All right. So let's go ahead and lay our pressure plate down right there. Okay, and you can see if this floor was made of stone, it would be hardly visible at all. So uh, let me just show you what it looks like if you use it with a stone. Just a normal stone. Here we go. Do, do, do. So if it's just normal stone and you put your stone pressure plate on top, it looks very non-suspicious. Doesn't look suspicious at all. Let's see. If somebody was real, they would be like, it's kind of weird that they put that there, but not too sure. So now if I walk this, I can go straight in. Now this is again, another reason why you leave the button in here, because otherwise you're gonna have a tough time getting out. Let's go ahead and press that and get back out of here. No, really bad at using the computer for this. All right. There we have it, your secret room, covered in things, and you can go straight in and straight out. Nobody will know. So let's go ahead and write up that last step um, with the pressure plate. There we go. All right, it's from inside secret layer. All right, so I said, first get two torches, a stack of your favorite building blocks, four paintings, an iron door, and a button. Do you notice anything that we left out here? Let's take a look at our build. Make sure our instructions match what we actually need. Here's our button. I see button, I see the iron door, I see our torches, our favorite building block. Oh, let me out. Um, I see our paintings, 
See, we did only use four. Um, the ones the other thing? Yep, pressure plate. So you always want to try to follow your instructions make sure you're missing anything. So an iron door, and we'll just go right in there. An iron door. Iron door. And we didn't even tell them how many. So let's go back and add that too. So they only need one iron door. And one pressure plate. There. So now we have everything. So then let's check our next instruction. Secondly, build a secret room in your area using your favorite building blocks. All right, that was pretty easy. You know what we didn't tell them? We didn't tell them to leave an opening for the door. We just said build a secret room. And the door has to be the right size too. So let's go ahead and add that. Secondly, build a secret room in your area using your favorite building blocks. Leave one space for one door. That should be enough, right? One space for a door. You know how big a door is in Minecraft. Next, place the torch or torches inside your secret room. This will keep monsters from spawning inside. Perfect. Then place the iron door in the door space in your secret room. Now this makes more sense now that we fixed our other instructions. Also place a button next to the door inside so you can get out without destroying your walls. There you go. After that, use a painting to cover the entire space where the door is. This might take a little while and you may want to place your paintings in different places until you get it just the way you like. All right, perfect. Now we can tell them that last part about putting down the pressure plate. Let's take a look at where we put it. All right, so we placed it, where do we place it? Directly in front of the door, right? So let's make sure we tell them that. So first, secondly, let's look at our other time transitions. Next, then after that, and this is our last step. So we can finally use finally. Finally, place the pressure plate on the ground directly in front of the door. Um, so I wonder if that's enough because let's take a look. Choose in front of the door. There's this block and then there's now you can't place a block directly in front. It won't stick down because there's already something in this space. But you can place it here. So maybe we need to write that to be very specific because you don't want anybody getting stuck on that step, not knowing where they should put it. Finally, place the pressure plate on the ground. There's our bossy verb. Place the pressure plate on the ground directly in front of the door. So maybe we should say in front of the door and the painting so they know exactly where to place it. On the ground in front of the door and the painting. Now you have a secret room. And there we go. So now you can write instructions just like YouTubers do. And this should be an easy way for you to make your own um, YouTube videos or even your own instruction manuals for your friends or your family um, for stuff that you're really good at. It doesn't just have to be Minecraft. You can make things on how to play basketball, how to take care of a special kind of pet, um, how to write really good stories. It could be anything. And you can still use all the things we learned today, the imperative verbs, the bossy verbs, and um, the transitions, the time connectors. So first, secondly, next, then, after that, finally. All those words are what makes your writing um, even more understandable and makes you a better communicator overall. All right, see you next time. Hello everyone. My name is Jason Levy and I'm the music teacher at Campus International School. Today I'm gonna to be teaching you a song all about one of my favorite treats. So I hope everybody's hungry because we're gonna be learning a song all about chocolate cookies. So today we're gonna to be learning a song that's based on a melody from Sarah Sponda. Now, Sarah Sponda is a song all about a spinning wheel and taking that wool and making it into the thread or into the yarn. But 
we're going to change the words to that. So just take a listen the first time through and see if you can recognize the, the dessert, the treat that I'm going to be singing about. Chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, yum, yum, yum. Chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, yum, yum, yum. An Oreo, a chocolate Oreo. I love the creamy filling of a chocolate Oreo. So I think you probably heard that the dessert that I really, really enjoy are some Oreo cookies. So I'm going to sing a line first, and then you're going to echo after me. And we're going to take it in little chunks. So here's the first one. Here I go, and then you're going to echo after me. Chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, yum, yum, yum. Your turn, go. Chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, yum, yum, yum. Excellent job. So we do that actually a second time here in this first part. So let's try it again. I'll do it first. You do it after me. One, here I go. Chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, yum, yum, yum. Chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, yum, yum, yum. Excellent job. So now let's try that with me, and we're going to sing it two times in a row, because the first section has us do that chocolate cookies part two times in a row. So let's try it with me. One, here we go. Chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, yum, yum, yum. Chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, yum, yum, yum. Very good. Now this time we're going to add some body percussion to it. So the first time, whenever we say the word chocolate, we're going to clap twice. So it'll look like this. Chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, yum, yum, yum. Chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, yum, yum, yum. So try that with me, and this time I'm also going to add another motion. See if you can figure out what it is. So here we go together. One, here we go. Chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, yum, yum, yum. Chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, yum, yum, yum. Very good. So I loved how you added the clap, and you probably noticed that on the yum, 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 I added a rub your belly. So try that with me one more time. And I'm going to add yet another body percussion. So you're doing the claps, you're rubbing your belly on yum, 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 and you're also making sure that you pay attention to what my third body percussion is. So here we go. One, here we go. Chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, yum, yum, yum. Chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, yum, yum, yum. Excellent job. So you notice that I added a snap on the word cookies. So just one snap on the word cookies, chocolate cookies, and then yum, yum, yum. Try that whole thing with me. One, here we go. Chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, yum, yum, yum. Chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, yum, yum, yum. Very good. Now the next part is all about that cookie that we love, and it goes like this. I'll sing it first, you echo after me. An Oreo, a chocolate Oreo, try that, go. An Oreo, a chocolate Oreo. Very good. So it goes from our lower voice into that higher voice. So let's try it again with me. Or right, I'll sing it first. You'll echo after me. One, here I go. An Oreo, a chocolate Oreo. An Oreo. A chocolate Oreo. Very good. You're picking that up very quick. And on Oreo, we're going to make a big O with our arms. So an Oreo, a chocolate Oreo. And don't forget to still clap on chocolate. Try it with me. One, here we go. An Oreo, a chocolate Oreo. Excellent. Now this last part, this last part, talks about that white creamy filling. I love the creamy filling of a chocolate Oreo. I'll do that one more time just so you can hear it. I love the creamy filling of a chocolate Oreo. So I'll sing it once, you echo after me. I love the creamy filling of a chocolate Oreo. I love the creamy filling of a chocolate Oreo. Very good. And the motion that we can do for the I love the creamy filling 
we can just add some jazz hands. I love the creamy filling of a chocolate Oreo. So let's try that whole section with the Oreo part all the way to the end. So when we start up here, and you can sing that with me. And if you forget the words, it's okay because they're going to be down underneath me um, on the screen. So here we go. One, here we go. And Oreo, a chocolate Oreo. I love the creamy filling of a chocolate Oreo. Excellent job. You guys were such great singers, and I love how you did those motions. So this song has definitely made me hungry. Let's try it one more time. I'm going to sing it. You're going to sing with me. The words are at the bottom of the screen. Don't forget those motions. So here we go. One, here we go. Chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, yum, yum, yum. Chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, chocolate cookies, yum, yum, yum. An Oreo, a chocolate Oreo. I love the creamy filling of a chocolate Oreo. Excellent job. You are all such great singers. And in fact, singing the song made me kind of hungry. So I think I'm going to go find some Oreo cookies. So again, my name is Jason Levy from Campus International School, and I can't wait to make some more music with you next time. See you later. Bye. Chapter 5 Eating Lunch in the Cafeteria Kyle stared at his wielded fish sticks, wishing he could pull a magic take-another-turn card out of thin air. His wilted fish sticks. Wilted is like what a flower does when it doesn't have enough water. Um, it kind of bends down, it looks kind of droopy. So just imagine that being applied to fish sticks. He has like floppy, gross, soggy fish sticks. I blew it, he mumbled. Yep, Akimi agreed. You basically did. Can you imagine how awesome that new library is going to be if Mr. Lemoncello and his Imagination Factory guys had anything to do with it? Yes, I can, and I'm kind of hoping to s I get to see it, too. After all, I wrote a real essay, not one sentence about balloons. Thanks. Rub it in. Akimi eased up a little. Hey Kyle, when you're playing a game like Sorry and you get bumped back three spaces, do you usually quit? No. If I get bumped, I play harder because I know I need to find a way to get back those three spaces and pull ahead of the pack. Hey guys! Miguel Fernandez carried his tray over to join Kyle and Akimi. He was being followed by a kid with spiky hair and glasses the size of welder's goggles. You two know Andrew Peckelman, right? Hey, said Kyle and Akimi. Hello. Andrew is one of my top library aides, said Miguel. Cool, said Akimi. Mrs. Youngins, the librarian, just confirmed that Mr. Lemoncello is the top secret benefactor who donated all the money to build a new public library. Five hundred million dollars! She heard it on NPR, added Peckelman, who more or less talked through his nose. So we did some primary source research on Mr. Lemoncello and his connection to Alexandriaville. What'd you find out? asked Kyle. First off, said Miguel, he was born here. He had nine brothers and sisters, added Andrew. All of them crammed into a tiny apartment with only one bathroom over in Little Italy, said Miguel. And, said Peckelman, sounding like he wanted to one-up Miguel. He loved the old public library down on Market Street. He used to go there when he was a kid and needed a pl quiet place to think and doodle his ideas. And get this, said Miguel eagerly. Mrs. Tobin, the librarian back then, took an interest in little Luigi, even though he was just, you know, a kid like us. She kept the library open late some nights and let him borrow junk from her desk or her purse, thimbles and thumbtacks and glue bottles, even red Barbie doll boots, stuff he used for game pieces so he could map out his first ideas on a library table. Then. Andrew jumped in. Then Mrs. Tobin took Mr. Lemoncello's sketch for her family frenzy home to her husband who ran a print shop. They signed some papers, created a company, and within a couple of years they were all millionaires. But Miguel had the last word. Now of course Mr. Lemoncello is a bazillionaire. 
What are you four nerds so excited about? said Haley Daly as she waltzed past with the gaggle of popular girls in her royal court. Haley was the princess of the seventh grade. Blonde hair, blue eyes, blazingly bright smile. She looked like a walking toothpaste commercial. We're pumped about Mr. Lemoncello, said Miguel. And the new library, said Andrew. And, said Kyle lem- melodramatically, just seeing you, Haley. You are so immature. Come on, girls. Haley and her friends flounced away to the cool kids' table. Check it out, said Akimi, gesturing towards the cafeteria's food line, where Charles Chiltington was balancing two trays, his own and one for Mrs. Cameron. I'm so glad you have lunchroom to duty today, Mrs. Cameron, Kyle heard Chiltington say. If you don't mind, I have a few questions about how conventions within genres, such as poetry, drama, or essays, can affect meaning. Well, Charles, I'd be happy to discuss that with you. Thank you, Mrs. Cameron, and may I say, that sweater certainly compliments your eye color. What a suck-up, mumbled Akimi. Chiltington's trying to use his weaselly charm to make sure Mrs. C sends his essay up the line to Mr. Lemoncello. Don't worry, said Kyle. Mrs. Cameron isn't the final judge. Mr. Lemoncello is. And since he's a genius, he will definitely pick the essays you guys all wrote. Undoubtedly, said Peckelman. Thanks, Kyle, said Miguel. I just wish you could win with us, said Akimi. Well, maybe I can. Like you said, this is just a move back three spaces card. A take a walk on the boardwalk when someone else owns it. It's a shoot in shoots and ladders. A detour to the molasses swamp in Candyland. If you haven't played some of these games before, um, all these things he's talking about are like bad things in a game. If you fall down the shoots and shoots and ladders, you go back spaces. If you end up in the molasses swamp, you get kind of stuck there. Um, if you have to go to the boardwalk when someone else owns it, you owe money in Monopoly. Yo, Kyle, said Miguel, exactly how many board games have you played? Enough to know that you don't ever quit until somebody else actually wins. He picked up his lunch and headed for the dirty tray window. Akimi called after him. Where are you going? I have the rest of lunch and all of study hell to work on a new essay. But Mrs. Cameron won't take it. Maybe, but I've got to roll the dice one more time. Maybe I'll get lucky. I hope so, said Akimi. Me too. See you guys on the bus. It's the end of chapter five. Chapter six. Working on his library essay like he'd never worked on any essay in his whole essay writing life, Kyle crafted a killer thesis sentence that compared libraries to his favorite games. Using a library can make learning about anything and everything fun, he wrote. When you're in a library researching a topic, you're on a scavenger hunt, looking for clues and prizes in books instead of your attic or backyard. He put in points and subpoints. He wrapped everything up with a tidy conclusion. He even checked his spelling twice, but Akimi had been right. I'm sorry, Kyle, Miss Cameron said when he handed her his new paper at the end of the day. This is very good and I'm impressed by your extra effort. However, the deadline was this morning. Rules are rules, the same as they are in all the board games you mentioned in your essay. She'd basically handed Kyle a go back 500 spaces card, but Kyle refused to give up. He remembered how his mother had written to Mr. Lemoncello's Imagination Factory when he and his brothers needed a fresh set of clue cards for the clue cards for the indoors outdoor scavenger hunt. Maybe he could send his essay directly to Mr. Lemoncello via email. Maybe if the game maker wasn't judging the essays until later that night, Kyle still had a shot. A long shot. But hey, sometimes the long ones were the only shots you got. The second he hit home, he sat down at his mother's kitchen computer. He attached his essay file to a high-priority email addressed to Mr. Lemoncello at the Imagination Factory. What are you doing, Kyle? His mother asked when she came into the room and found him typing on her computer. Some extra credit homework. Extra credit? School's out at the end of the week. So? You're not playing my Diner Dash game, are you? No, Mom. It's an essay about Mr. Lemoncello's amazing new library downtown. Oh, sounds interesting. I heard on the radio that there's going to be a gala grand opening reception this Friday night at the Parker House Hotel, right across the street from the old bank building. I mean, the new library. Cal typed in a PS to his email. I hope at the party on Friday you have balloons. He hit send. Who did your essay send? Who did you send your essay to? His mother asked. Your teacher? No, Mr. Lomoncello himself. It took some digging, but I found his email address on the game company's website. Really? I'm impressed. 
His mom rubbed his hair. You know, this morning I said to your dad, Kyle can be just as smart as Curtis and just as focused as Mike, when he puts his mind to it. Kyle smiled. Thanks, Mom. But his smile quickly disappeared when a bong alerted him to an incoming email from Mr. Lemoncello. It was an auto-response from Form Letter. Dear Lemoncello Game Lover, This is a no-reply mailbox. Your message did not go through. Do not try to resend it or you'll hear another bong. But thank you for playing our games. Aw, oh, poor Kyle. He's trying so many things and none of them seem to be working. Maybe in the next chapter he'll figure out a way. Chapter 7 Heading back to school on Tuesday, Kyle knew he had to put on a brave face. He smiled as he walked with his class toward the auditorium for a special early morning assembly. The one where Mr. Luigi L. Lemoncello himself would announce the winners of the library lock-in essay contest. I hope he picked yours, Kyle whispered to Akimi. Thanks, I do too, but the lock-in won't be as much fun without you. Well, when it's over and the library is officially open, you can take me on a tour. That's exactly what I'm going to do, if I win. If you don't, I'm sending a flaming squirrel after Mrs. Cameron. For this assembly, the 7th graders, most of whom were 12 years old, were told to sit in the front rows, close to the stage. That made Kyle feel a little better. At least he'd get a chance to see Mr. Lemoncello up close and personal. But his hero wasn't even on stage. Just the principal, the school library, Mrs. Youngins, and a red-headed woman in high-heeled shoes who Kyle didn't recognize. She sat up straight, like someone who had like someone had slipped a yardstick down the back of her bright red business suit. Her glasses were bright red too. That's Dr. Yanina Zinchenko, gushed Miguel Fernandez, who was sitting on Kyle's right. Who's she? asked Akimi, seated to Kyle's left. Just the most famous librarian in the whole wide world. All right, boys and girls, said the principal at the podium. Settle down. Quiet, please. It is my great honor to introduce the head librarian for the new Alexandriaville Public Library, Dr. Yanina Zinchenko. Everybody clapped. The tall lady in the red outfit strode to the microphone. Good morning. Her voice was breathy with just a hint of a Russian accent. Twelve years ago, this town lost its one and only public library when it was torn down to make room for an elevated parking garage. Back then, many said the internet had rendered the old-fashioned library obsolete. Obsolete means useless or no longer necessary or useful. That a new parking garage would attract shoppers to the boutiques and dress shops near the old bank building. But the library's demolition also meant that those of you who are now 12 years old have lived your entire lives without a public library. She looked down at the front rows. That is why, to kick off our summer reading program, 12 12-year-olds 12 will be selected to be the very first to explore the wonders awaiting inside Mr. Lemoncello's extraordinary new library. You will, of course, need your parents' permission. We have slips for you to take home. You will also need a sleeping bag, a toothbrush, and if you please, a change of clothes. She smiled mysteriously. You might consider packing two pairs of underwear. Okay, thought Kyle, that's bizarre. Did the librarian really think seventh graders were toilet trained? There will be movies, food, fun games, and prizes. Also, each of our 12 winners will receive a $500 gift card good towards the purchase of Lemoncello games and gizmos. Oh man, 500 bucks worth of free games and gear? Kyle sank a little lower in his seat. The next time someone gave an extra credit essay assignment, he'd turn it in early. And now, here to announce our winners, the man behind the new library, the gaster gamester himself, Mr. Luigi Lemoncello. Dr. Zinchenko gestured to her left. The whole auditorium swung their heads. People were clapping and whistling and cheering. <coughs> but nobody came on stage. The applause petered out. And then, on the opposite side of the stage, Kyle heard a very peculiar sound. It was a cross between a burp and the squeak from a squeeze toy. Whoa, that sounds a little weird. Chapter 8 Over on the side of the stage, a shoe that looked like a peeled open banana appeared from behind a curtain. When it landed, the shoe burp squeaked. 
As a second banana shoe burp squeaked onto the floor, Kyle looked up and there he was, Mr. Lemoncello. He had loose and floppy limbs and was dressed in a three-piece black suit with a bright red tie. His black broad-brimmed hat was cocked at a crooked angle atop his curly white hair. Kyle was so close he could see a sly twinkle sparking in Mr. Lemoncello's coal black eyes. Treading very carefully, Mr. Lemoncello walked toward the podium. The burp squeaks in his shoes seemed to change pitch depending on how hard he landed on his heels. He had a, a couple of little jig steps, a quick hop and a stutter step, skip, and yes, his shoes were squeaking out a song. Pop goes the weasel. On the pop, Mr. Lemoncello popped behind the podium. The crowd went wild. Mr. Lemoncello politely bowed and said very softly, Thank you, thank you, grazie, grazie. He bent forward so his mouth was maybe an inch away from the mi microphone. Buongiorno, boys and uh, girls. Uh. He spoke very timidly, very slowly. This is how my uh, mama and my uh, papa teach uh, me to speak uh, the English. He wiggled his ears, straightened his back. But then, he said in a crisp, clear voice, I went to the Andrew Alexandriaville Public Library, where a wonderful librarian named Miss Gail Tobin helped me learn how to speak like this. If two witches were watching two watches, which witch would watch which watch? That's a tongue twister right there. I can also speak while upside down and underwater, but not today because I just had the suit dry cleaned and do not want to get it to wet. Mr. Lemoncello bounced across the stage like a happy grasshopper. Now then, children, if I may call you that, which I must because I have not yet memorized all of your names, even though I am working on it, what do you think is the most amazingly incredible thing you'll find inside your wondrous new library, besides, of course, all the knowledge you need to do anything and everything you ever want or need to do? No one said anything. They were too mesmerized by Mr. Lemoncello's rat-a-tat words. Would it be A, robots silently whizzing their way through the library restocking the shelves, B, the electronic learning center with three dozen plasma screen TVs all connected to flight simulators and educational video games, or C, the Wonder Dome. Lined with ten giant video screens, it can make the whole building feel like a rocket ship blasting off into outer space. The game room, someone shouted, the robots, the video dome. Mr. Lemoncello raced back to the podium and made a buzzing noise into the microphone. Sorry, the correct answer is, and not just because of Winn-Dixie, Winn-Dixie, D, all of the above. The crowd went wild. Mr. Lemoncello whirled around to face his head librarian. Dr. Zinchenko, will you kindly help me pass out our first 12 library cards? It was time to announce the essay contest winners. Dr. Zinchenko, Zinchenko placed a stack of 12 shiny cards on the podium in front of Mr. Lemoncello. Please, he said, as I call your name, come join me on stage. Miguel Fernandez. Yes, Miguel jumped out of his seat. Akimi Hughes. Woohoo! Kyle was thrilled to see his two friends be the first ones called to the stage. Andrew Peckelman, Bridget Waj, Sierra Russell, Yasmin Smith Snyder. Yasmin squealed when her name was called. Sean Keegan, Haley Daly, Rose Vermette, and Kaylin Corson. Ten kids, all the same age as Kyle, were up on stage with his idol, Mr. Lemoncello. He was not. Only two more chances. As if reading his mind, Mr. Lemoncello said, only two more, and tapped a pair of library cards on the podium. Charles Chiltington. Gosh, really? He dashed up to the podium and started pumping Mr. Lemoncello's hand. Thank you, sir. This is such an honor. Truly, I mean that. Thank you, Charles. May I have my hand back? I need it to flip over this final card. Of course, sir, but I cannot wait to spend the night in your library, or as I like to call it, your Athenium. Because as I said in my essay, when you open a book, you open your mind. Finally, Charles the Brown Noser. That kind of mean, uh, means like, um... Uh, being a teacher's pet or trying to get people who are in charge to like you just by being really, really, really um, helpful. Let go. Charles the Browners are let go of Mr. Lemoncello's hand and went over to line up with the other winners. And last but not least, said Mr. Lemoncello, Kyle Keeley. Kyle could not believe his ears. He thought he was dreaming. But then Akimi started waving for him to come on up. 
Dazed, Kyle made his way up the steps to join the others on stage. Mr. Lemoncello handed Kyle a library card. His name and the number 12 were printed on the front. Two book covers, I Love You, Stinky Face, and The Napping House were on the back. Let's all pose for a picture, please, said the principal. When everyone moved into position for the photographer, Kyle found himself right next to Mr. Lemoncello. He swallowed hard. I'm a big fan, sir, he said, his voice kind of shaky. Why, thank you. And remind me, you are? I'm Kyle, sir, Kyle Keeley. Ah, yes, the boy who proved what I've always known to be true. The game is never over till it's over. Bong. I wonder if he means that because Kyle kept trying and didn't didn't wait for the deadline to be the end, that he kept trying just like a game. It's never over till it's over. Kyle just kept trying and trying to get his essay in. Ah, oh, this is very interesting. Since Kyle and his friends are playing a game and have talked about games, um, we're going to make our own game based on the book. So this is Kahoot, and if you've never played, uh, it's a really fun and easy way to play a game on any kind of device. You can use a tablet, you can use a computer, you can use a laptop, you can use your phone, you can use anything to play Kahoot. So what we're going to do is when you go to Kahoot.com, you want to sign up if you haven't already. And you're going to go ahead and click student and then select your day of birth. And then enter a username. If you click this button, it'll make one up for you if you can't think of one. So I'm going to be Fuzzy Leopard 43. Um, you can sign up with your email and create a password. So I'm going to do just that. And now that I've put in my information and logged in, here is what you should see. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually create our own Kahoot that our friends could play that's based on our book that we've read so far. So let's create a, create a Kahoot. So this is what it looks like where you're typing the question. So let's go ahead and enter our title first. So we'll call it Escape from Mr. Lemoncello. Lemoncello. Ooh, can't spell today. Mr. Lemoncello's library. And we'll do chapters, we'll put in the description, it's going to be chapters 1 through 8, just the ones we've read so far. Chapters 1 through 8. And uh, we're going to say it's going to be visible to everyone, so everyone can play our game. And we could change the picture even if we wanted to. Let's try image library and see if there's anything cool. Hmm. Ours is a board game theme. I wonder if there's any games. Sports, geography, history. I wonder if sports will have something. Uh, well, I don't see really any board game type things. Uh, what about a library, I wonder? Do, 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 do. Or let's try most popular. See if there's anything cool in here. Hmm. There's some math ones. Well, let's just go for the rocket ship then. All right. Um, right here is where we type our, qu our question. So let's think of something easy to start people out easy. Let's just do a basic one. Who is the author of Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's library. Ooh, cannot spell today. There we go. Now, you want to be a little bit tricky. You don't want to make it too easy for everybody. So, let's put our right answer in first. So the 
author from Mr. Lemonchel's library. And here we'll make sure we spell it right. Do, do, do. All the way to the front. It's Chris Grab and Stein. Grab and Stein. So let's put that in first. Chris Grab and Stein. And we're going to click here to show that that's the right answer so we know we already put it in. Now, let's make one that's really close but not quite right to try to trick people up who don't go back and look. Um, so we know who really knows who the author is. Let's put Christine Grabenstein. That'll be extra tricky. Um, let's put one that's totally wrong, um, but is in the book, so it might confuse a few people. Because they'll be like, oh, I think I remember that name. Let's put Kyle Keeley as the author. Might trick people up if they're like, oh, is it the narrator or the author? And what is another one we could put? We could put something silly like, hmm, what would be a funny one? Superman? There we go. So we have four options. You can also, if you want to be extra tricky, put two super close together ones that are trick ones. We can try that out on our next one. Um, you can change the time limit here. If you want people to have a lot of time or a little time, you can also make it worth less or more points. And if you want them to have more than one right answer, you can do that too. All right, so let's go ahead and add another question. We'll do it a quiz question. All right, what's another one we could do? How about who is not a character in Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's library? So these kinds of questions are trickier in that they have to pick what who is not the character. So let's put ones that are characters and then put one that's not. So we'll do Kyle Keeley and we'll do Who's another good character? Oh, Curtis Keeley, his brother. Let's put his other brother in too. Maybe it'll confuse somebody and they'll think, oh, there can't be that many Keeleys. We can do Mike Keeley. And who's not in the story? Hmm. Well, we could get a, we could confuse people and we could try and put the author in and see if they confuse the author as being a character. So he is not a character in the story. Alright, and there we go. There's our Kahoot that we made all on our own. And if you go in to see your Kahoot, you can send uh, people the code and they can play it. Uh, just make sure it says that it's public.